Welcome to Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy. Let's talk about that tentacle monster and what if. What the bloody hell? Monsters? No one prepared me for actual monsters. So those freaky tentacles actually belong to the Shuma Garoth, an ancient godlike being who rules multiple realities within the multiverse. So what if is going to explore the multiverse, but Shuma Garoth might play a much bigger role in the show than just in this first episode. And this ancient being is going to be the reason why the guardians of the multiverse will assemble. But there's more to it, as Shuma Garoth is likely going to be a key figure in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, and it could even be a key weapon of he who remains alternate self, Kang the Conqueror. Oh, wow! Lord of the Calamari! Alright, so Shuma Garoth is a very powerful being, and it's also very old. Like, seriously old. It goes all the way back to the creation of reality and it's a ruler of hundreds of other universes, and it's always trying to take over the Earth. I'm gonna dive deeper into Shuma Garoth later, but first, let's talk about its role in the first episode of What If. After Captain Carter obtained the Tesseract, Red Skull had to find his Plan B, which involved summoning this so-called true champion of Hydra, a big tentacle monster. <laughs> the champion of Hydra has risen! Five minutes later. <laughs> What's interesting here is that Red Skull learns about Shuma Garoth from the carving in the World Tree, which I guess means that the MCU Shuma Garoth has some ties to the Asgardians and the Infinity Stones, but we'll get back to this later since it's going to be very important. Eventually, Red Skull takes back the Space Stone, which was inside Steve's Hydra Stomper, so the Red Skull uses it to open a portal through which he summons Shuma Garoth. And by the way, this is also very similar to what happened in Hellboy. I mean, a group of Nazis during World War II open a blue portal, summoning a big ancient tentacle monster from another dimension. I'm just saying. Anyways, Shuma Garoth tries to enter Earth, but thanks to Captain Carter and her friends, they stop his tentacles. And Captain Carter sacrifices herself to push the beam back into the portal, and this transports Peggy 70 years into the future. But I don't think this will be Shuma Garoth's last appearance, as it will likely return later in Season 1 and also show up in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. So now let's explain what Shuma Garoth is and his significance to the multiverse. A fearsome creature with giant tentacles that'll suction your face clean off. Like I mentioned before, Shuma Garoth is an interdimensional ruler, and it's one of the most powerful beings out there, which I guess is a given at this point with any new powerful being in the MCU. Shuma Garoth is also one of the Great Old Ones, who are also known as the Many Angled Ones. The thing about the Great Old Ones is that they occupy the space between the universes, meaning they don't exist inside any universe, but in the great void between them. Slow down a little bit. There's a few people in the room that don't understand. Not me, I, I get it. Long ago, Shuma Garoth took over Earth, and it ruled for a very long time, until eventually it was banished by the time-traveling sorcerer, C. Sneg. Since then, Shuma has tried to conquer Earth on multiple occasions, but it was stopped by Doctor Strange. What is your job exactly besides making balloon animals? Protecting your reality, douchebag. Now, about C. Snake, like I said, he was the one that banished Shuma Garoth from Earth in the comics, but that might change in the MCU. I'm fairly certain that it's going to be Odin who banished Shuma Garoth. This will explain how the Red Skull learned about the ancient being from the Asgardian sculptured mural. This space stone is connected to Odin as it was in his possession before it was hidden on Earth. The Tesseract was the jewel of Odin's treasure room. So, if I had to guess, at some point in the MCU history, Shuma Garoth ruled Earth, and Odin used the space stone to defeat and banish the beam. It makes sense, since Odin is the ruler of the Nine Realms. In theory, Shuma Garoth is more powerful than Odin, but hey, I mean, come on, you know how these things work. I mean, Captain Carter just pushed the tentacles back into the portal, so maybe Odin did something like that too, only with the power of magic. You shall not pass! This might explain why Odin hid the Tesseract inside the old ancient picture wall. Maybe as a type of, Odin was here and he used this blue thingy to defeat an old tentacle monster, you're welcome silly mortals. <laughs> anyway, so while Captain Carter saved her Earth from Shuma Garoth, this could just be the start. There's a whole multiverse out there thanks to the events of Loki. In the upcoming episodes of What If, we will be introduced to multiple new heroes and visit their alternate universes. Shuma Garoth was so close to taking over Earth, but it failed. Ancient tentacle monsters tend to take these things personally, so with the multiverse opening up, Shuma Garoth will try to conquer the Earths of the other universes in this show. And by the end of Season 1, all of these heroes will team up to form the Guardians of the Multiverse, and together they will battle against Shuma Garoth and save their universes. It makes sense, with Captain Carter being the first episode of the show, sort of serving as the inciting incident for the rest of the season. 
But then Shimagaroth will go from What If directly to the movies, and it will be the big bad of Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. See, a few months back, there were actually rumors that Shimagaroth would be the villain in that movie. But after the tentacles and What If, I'm going to guess those rumors were correct. There was one true rumor out there today. I didn't want everybody to know what it was. Now, we recently did a video about our predictions for Doctor Strange 2, and Shumagaroth actually fits into this perfectly. All right, so in the comics, there's something called the Iron Bound Books of Shumagaroth. Nobody said anything about three books. Like, what am I supposed to do? Take, take one book or all books or, or what? Shuma created these books to manipulate humans and to keep his control over the Earth. In other versions, Shuma Garoth was locked inside of these books, and whenever someone used the books of magic, Shuma Garoth could be freed. I think you might know where I'm going with this. Also, I have to mention this, Shuma Garoth and the books were first introduced in the Conan the Barbarian comics. I just find that odd and interesting for some reason. Conan, what is best in life? To crush your enemies, see them driven before you, and to hear the lamentation of your women. Anyway, I have a feeling that for the sake of simplification, the MCU will combine the Ironbound books with the Darkhold. You can't have too many books in one movie, and with the Darkhold already introduced in WandaVision, this would just streamline things. In the post credit scene of WandaVision, Wanda hears the voices of her children. So what if it's from one of the universes under Shuma Garoth's rule, meaning an alternate reality where Shuma Garoth took control of the world? Maybe when Wanda unlocked her full Scarlet Witch magic powers, Shuma Garoth felt her presence in the multiverse, and now it's trying to take over her mind. Not only to unleash him on the main MCU universe, but also to steal her chaos magic. And according to Elizabeth Olsen, Wanda can travel between realities all on her own. She can travel between universes. And... Yes. So that power can prove useful for Shuma Garoth, who will probably want to use it to take over the whole multiverse. This might explain why Shuma Garoth needed Red Skull to open a portal for him. Maybe because of some cosmic rules, he couldn't access the universes by himself, and he needs someone to open the door for him. You're not invited. You can't trust him. Invite me in. With Wanda's power, he won't be limited anymore, and Shuma Garoth will be able to enter and conquer any universe at once. So it will lure Wanda into another universe where Shuma Garoth holds Billy and Tommy, and it will use them as a bargaining chip against Wanda. Also, let's not forget what Agatha said about the Scarlet Witch. It's your destiny to destroy the world. Which again, it's what happened in Hellboy. He will open the portal and bring about the end of the world. Anyways, this prophecy might just mean that the Scarlet Witch is destined to open the door for Shuma Garoth to take over Earth, which technically means the end of the world. All of this can be the thing that causes the Multiverse of Madness and Doctor Strange 2. And the multiverse stuff also explains Loki's role in the movie, since he's sort of the reason for the current situation in the multiverse, and he's likely to team up with Strange and Wanda to battle Shuma Garoth. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, sure. Also, speaking of the Darkhold, remember I mentioned earlier C. Snegg, the time-traveling sorcerer that originally banished Shuma Garoth from Earth. He also goes by Cagliostro, and what do you know, Cagliostro is mentioned in the first Doctor Strange movie. That's the Book of Cagliostro. The Book of Cagliostro played a significant role in the film. Caecilia stole a page from the book, and this allowed him to use magic from the Dark Dimension. Also, Stephen used the book to learn about the Time Stone. I am now the guardian of these books. So if a volume from this collection should be stolen again, I'd know it. Hello, you're fired. And Cagliostro gained his magic skills from the Darkhold, which is the book that's in Wanda's possession. It's also possible that since he wrote a book about the Dark Dimension, that he knows about traveling to the different realities in the multiverse, hence his connection to Shuma Garoth. Hmm, you know, all this talk about books, maybe they should just skip the magic stuff and just throw like heavy books at Shuma Garoth and just be done with it. I mean, Captain Carter didn't use any magic, she just pushed the tentacles back into the portal. Or I guess just stab him in the big eye. Harley stabbed poor Starro in the eye, which worked out pretty well for her. Oh right, and there were also the rats. Oh Cleo, you're the best. Oh wait, did Ratcatcher 2 control the rat that freed Scott Lang from the Quantum Realm and Endgame? Could it be? Marvel vs. DC crossover confirmed? Don't calm down with the rats! What? I have a thing with rats. So anyways, if Shuma Garoth will play a bigger role in What If and eventually connect to Doctor Strange 2, then the whole interconnectivity around this movie is becoming pretty awesome. WandaVision, Loki, and Spider-Man No Way Home all tie into the Multiverse of Madness, and now it looks like What If will be part of this as well. 
And that's very exciting because it opens the door for some of those animated characters appearing in the movies. Please, 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 please give us Haley Atwell as Captain Carter in Doctor Strange 2. And also remember that He Who Remains took control of Eliath, a giant time cloud dog that occupied the gaps between time. So it's entirely possible that his multiverse alternate, King the Conqueror, would be able to use Shuma Garoth, another being that occupies the cracks between the multiverse. And so what do you think? Do you think we'll see Shuma Garoth again in live action? Which What If characters do you hope to see appear in other movies and shows? Let me know in the comments below or at me on Twitter. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe. For Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy.